Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of the common questions we get is how often are all the guns able to fire in a salvo? And that question is often phrased uh, many different ways. In some ways it's completely incoherent and we've got to go back and forth to figure out what question they're actually asking. But uh, essentially it is in a ship-on-ship -ship engagement, typically you would want to fire a full broadside. So you're putting, for New Jersey's case, nine shells on a target to um, do as much damage as possible. It really gives you the biggest chance of having one of those shells hit this target. But it's a complex system loading these guns and time consuming. So how often is a ship able to do this? And I suspect uh, where this question comes from is in video games. Uh, in video games, you have a set reload time. At the end of that set reload time, every gun uh, is able to fire. Some more sophisticated games have situations in which a turret might be knocked out that might reduce your firepower for a set period of time. Um, likewise, board games or, or traditional tabletop miniature games tend to have a stat card for your ship that lists it as every turn you get this much firepower. Well, is that firepower actually consistent or is it variable? So we're going to look at a couple of ships and a couple of naval engagements and uh, try and answer that question. First off, I'm only using American and British ships, but I suspect that these numbers are fairly representative across the board. Uh, they all tend to be using very similar systems, and they, they were all certainly talking as these systems were developed. So even though hey, we don't really know what, uh, how many jams Bismarck had during her final engagement because those logs went down with the ship, um, or hey, maybe we have them but they're written in German, you can predict based on, on what I'm saying here uh, what uh, percentage of jams they would have. So first off, I want to look at an older American battleship and a relatively short engagement. In theory, a shorter engagement gives you less time to get worn out. Your equipment is less likely to break, your crew is less likely to be tired, uh, and the older battleships tend to have far more simplistic loading systems. The, the more modern the ship, the more different mechanical motors and hoists and things like that you're adding, and so the more room for something to break down. So we're specifically going to look at USS West Virginia at Suragawa Strait. West Virginia is armed with eight 16-inch 45 caliber guns. She had been heavily rebuilt after Pearl Harbor, so a lot of her stuff is refurbished to be uh, nearly new. However, at this point, she has already participated in a couple of campaigns, so her crew is pretty well trained, but her equipment is a little bit worn out from uh, frontline service. So, during the Battle of Saragawa Strait, she fires 16 salvos. They start at 352 and they end at 410. So we're talking about a, uh, a 20 minute engagement here, not particularly long. Uh, notice I said 16 salvos. In theory, her rate of fire is uh, close to one round every 30 seconds, but um, she's not even getting one round every minute. A couple of possible reasons for that. Uh, as we look at this, we might see some gaps in the numbers, uh, and that might indicate that there was a period where her guns were masked by another ship. Uh, it might indicate that uh, she, she was not in range of the target. And even though she can fire that quickly, she might not necessarily want to. You might want to fire a shot, wait for it to land, and then adjust for your next salvo to be accurate. In this case, not necessarily the case, because with her radar fire control, she actually scores a hit on the very first salvo. And uh, so let's see, first salvo, 352, fires eight shots. Obviously, at the beginning of the engagement, everything should be loaded and ready to go. Uh, and the uh, radar spot says no correction, no correction on range or deflection, which means right on target, keep firing. 35 seconds later, the guns are completely reloaded. So they get off eight shots again. Um, radar says no correction, 
uh, visual spotting says that they want to come down 100 yards. The Japanese fleet is coming towards the American fleet. That's pretty good. The hoists are already preloaded with several shells. The crew is ready to go. They're, they're uh, fresh at this point. They're, they're able to get off a second shot within 35 seconds. And it's a full salvo. But you can see through the first five salvos, they managed to get off uh, full eight gun salvos. And the first five salvos take place over just three minutes. So they're, they're maintaining a rate of fire of about uh, 30 to 40 seconds between shots. That, that's pretty impressive. The sixth salvo, they only get off seven shots. The seventh salvo, they only get off five shots. Uh, and, and so it continues. After that fifth salvo, they never manage to fire all eight barrels at the same time again. Uh, this could be mechanical failures. This could be uh, the crew is just starting to get worn out and they're not able to move the shells. On Iowa-class battleships, you can fit five shells in the hoists. After you've gone through those five shells in the hoists, you have to be manually pulling more shells to the hoist using the par buckling system that we've talked about in other videos. And so that is going to take a lot of time uh, to, to keep getting these stacked up. And you can see that she's not able to maintain this, this uh, rate of fire after she's fired those initial five shots. Salvos 9 through 12 are seven gun salvos. Uh, that may indicate that there's some piece of equipment, a hoist or a powder uh, hoist or something like that, that that's uh, been knocked out. She's still uh, keeping up a relatively good rate of fire. Uh, salvo 10 to 11, there's, there's a full minute reload. But then they get back to a relatively good rate of fire, 30 to 40 seconds, blah, blah, blah. Uh, salvo 13. At this point, the battle's just about over. Uh, they only get off a three-gun salvo, which is um, the lowest one up till this point. Salvo 14, they only get off a uh, two-gun salvo. And then the ceasefire um, alarm is sounded, but they already have shells loaded in two of the guns, so they have to discharge those. Uh, so you see they fire a salvo 15 uh, a little bit later, they're not in a rush to load anything. They want to make sure that uh, their guns aren't masked and everything's clear. Uh, but only one of the two shells is actually ready to go. So there's actually a 16th salvo right after that where they fire their last shell in there. So uh, again, relatively quick battle. You can see that early on they're able to fire all their guns, but with this constant firing, you can see that the rate of fire starts to go down in terms of um, how long it takes to reload, and you can also see that the number of barrels reloaded starts to go down. Some of these gun crews are performing better than others. There's a link in the description below with the full after action report that has this log of shells and talks about other uh, challenges they faced. Next up, I want to talk about a more modern American battleship. In this case, we're going to talk about New Jersey and the one instance of her fighting a ship-to-ship -ship action. New Jersey, of course, is practically brand new in February of 44 during Operation Hailstone, the attack on Truk Lagoon. So the ship, all the equipment should be fully functioning, new working order. The crew has had time to, to train up. They've had, uh, what, nine, ten months together uh, in, on a commission ship, a little bit longer pre-commissioning unit. So they know what they're doing at this point, but they don't have any combat experience. This is, they've just gotten to the Pacific. So things should operate correctly. Again, this is a more modern ship, so there are more hoists and other things like that. And uh, this is in action against the Japanese destroyer. As Japanese ships attempted to escape Truk Lagoon, New Jersey and Iowa started chasing down the Japanese destroyer Nowaki, which, not to spoil the ending, she's the only uh, Japanese ship that manages to escape uh, during this part of the engagement. Uh, and so this is the only time that New Jersey fires her main battery at an enemy warship. She fires seven salvos uh, from 347 to 356. So seven salvos in six minutes. Uh, these are at uh, relatively long range. 32,000 yards is where the engagement starts. 
Um, and it actually cranks up from there because the Japanese destroyer is running away probably 32 or 33 knots and the Iowas are able to do about 31 knots at this point. Uh, so 32,000 yards would be about 16 miles. Uh, so pretty close to uh, be the, the edge of visual range. They are using uh, radar fire control, although New Jersey knocks out her own forward radar when she fires her guns because of the concussion. It is a stern chase, so she's firing her guns more or less dead ahead. Ideally, you don't do that in training. You always see her firing over the broad side so that the, she doesn't damage herself. In combat, you gotta fire wherever the enemy is. Uh, so there is a non-gun related casualty. She's also using optical, but this Japanese ship is at the extreme limit going into the haze. Uh, and of course, laying smoke screen to escape from two battleships. Uh, and New Jersey has the benefit of air spotting from the carriers that had previously raided Troop Lagoon. So air spot is here. They're reporting black geysers for New Jersey. New Jersey's uh, dyed shells are supposed to be blue. Um, so it's probably a dark blue color against the light blue of, the, of Troop Lagoon. Um, so let's see, she fires, again, seven salvos. Um, each salvo is only one turret, so she's only firing a maximum of three shells per salvo. So she fires turret two, then she fires turret one, uh, with about a minute in between, because that's the time it takes for the shells to reach the target, and they adjust their fire based on that and fire again. They're, they're trying to conserve ammunition, using battleship caliber shells to sink a destroyer is not particularly efficient. Uh, and real life destroyers don't pose the danger that they do in uh, games like World of Warships, where, where it's much more balanced, um, which is part of why they only expend seven uh, salvos and then decide it's over. Uh, she fires two full salvos, uh, two full turret salvos, and then on the third salvo, the right projectile hoist jams completely. And uh, so she never fires her right barrel in turret two again. She fires center and left, and then turret one's able to fire all of them. Uh, then turret two salvo, center and left, so on and so forth. So uh, one sixth of New Jersey's guns that are able to engage are out of action after the first salvo. It is fixed immediately after the engagement. It's just in this brief, uh, what was it, five minute period that she's firing, the hoist jams and they aren't able to, to clear it. So they fire partial salvos. So, so far you can see that it is pretty rare after the first couple of salvos the score hits, even on a relatively short engagement. Typically short engagements, things work right. And then in the longer engagements, it gets way uh, worse as men and material continues to degrade. So, let's look at a longer, more sustained fire. American battleships never get into a really long, sustained fire mission uh, during World War II against surface ships. Against shore bombardment, sure, but you're not necessarily firing full salvos. You're just firing a barrel to see where it lands and then firing the next one. Against surface ships, like we said at the beginning of the video, you're trying to fire full salvos to get as many, uh, to figure out the range as best as possible. Uh, and sometimes you're conserving shells, so you fire partial salvos to see how far off you are, and as you start to dial in on the target, then you would be firing your full salvos. The various U.S. Navy battleship actions, such as Truk Lagoon, Sargawa Strait, Washington vs. Karishima, um, these are very, very quick knockdown dragout battles. But the U.S. Navy did do a sustained test in October of 1942 on board the battleship Idaho. She was about to have her gun barrels relined, and so they said, all right, let's try and shoot through the entire magazine for the forward two turrets. Idaho can carry 100 rounds per gun. They wanted to see how effective it was. So she's trying to fire 600 shots, 100 rounds per gun. That should be 100 salvos, correct? It took 156 salvos to fire her guns uh, to, to get through that whole 600 round magazine. That represents 164% of the salvos that should have been fired. Only 20 times did all six guns fire together. 
47 times, you got five out of six, that's pretty good. Uh, 22 times, four. 31 times, three. 25 times, only two guns were loaded and ready to fire. And 11 times, only a single gun was ready to fire uh, when it was time to fire the next salvo. So you can start to see that the video games are showing you an idealized situation and it's far more common for most of the guns to not be able to fire. Uh, really, there should be a roll of the dice on every barrel and especially as you fire more and more consistently, the die roll you have to get gets more and more difficult. Uh, so this was just the American battleships. Was there just some issue with, with the American guns? No. Now this is uh, pretty consistent across other ships. Uh, Prince of Wales, of course, in her engagement with Bismarck, fires 17 salvos with five or fewer guns. She had 10 guns. Um, and this was a relatively quick action in the Battle of Denmark Strait. She is a brand new ship. All the teething problems haven't been worked out. However, her sister ship, King George V, doesn't fare much better in her final battle. And King George V is, is six months newer with more uh, of the teething problems worked out. Uh, during her final battle with Bismarck, King George V has a mal uh, mechanical malfunction in turret A. Uh, y turret goes down for several minutes. These are both her quad turrets. So when there's an issue, you, you're losing four out of your 10 gun barrels. She had issues with the shell rammers, the flash doors, the shell hoists, the breech mechanism. Uh, one gun was down for 30 minutes while a, because a uh, cordite bag failed to explode. And at the end of the day, she fired just 339 rounds into Bismarck, which is a lot of rounds. However, Rodney, an older ship with heavier guns that also had some, some teething problems and one fewer gun barrel, was able to fire 380 rounds over that same time period. So, um, you can see that there are consistently always teething problems. If you are able to find any after-action report from any battleship in a surface engagement uh, and you go down, to, there is a section that we'll talk about uh, gun casualties. In this case, casualty doesn't refer to a man down sort of casualty. It refers to a mechanical failure of some sort. And it will list failures to fire, a number of barrels that fire on each salvo, things like that, because it's so common. Uh, and if you can find one that does not show anything like this, I would love to see it. I've never seen one in my life. So this has been a brief sampling, just to give you an idea that uh, most of the time, you're only able to fire a partial salvo because the guns aren't loaded in time because you've got a mechanical failure or because your crew uh, is worn out. Is this the answer you were expecting? Let us know in the comments section down below if your experience lead you to believe something similar or if this is a surprise to you. I'm, I'm interested in what the public perspective of Battleship gun firings was before this information was released. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. That's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.